I roll to the channel. I'm taking the Orcs Green Tide attachments to two two-day tournaments in June, and I can't wait. I've had lots of painting to do, as I didn't have 120 bodies ready to go. Painting has been fun, though, and I'm almost there. Check this out. So other than being ridiculously fun, how I'm going to play them, and what are my key tactics going to be? The core of the army is the boys. All the buffs and the strats are all about them. Firstly, the boys get a 5 plus invent at all times, no longer needing the war resilience. Then if a unit has 10 plus models, you can reroll saves of 1, a small buff, but it can help. And obviously leads you to having big units. In fact, all the strats are for the boys, and most get better for those big units as well. Then the boys' abilities themselves really matter. They have sticky objectives. Devastating for an army when you're taking board control. Also, if they're a squad of 20, they can take two leaders if one is a war boss. This would be great, as I'll see later. It's pretty well known that the best leader for the boys is a war boss. He gives plus one to hit in melee, taking them to hitting on twos, and he himself hits really hard. The boys aren't that punchy, especially into vehicles, but weight of dice gets them through. This guy really helps. Going to nine attacks in the war, hitting on two, strength 11, AP 2 and 2 damage is pretty handy. A big unit of 20 boys can actually take two leaders, which is ace, and the most talked about combo is taking the pain boy as well. He gives the unit 5 plus feel no pain, and once per battle returns D3 models, a massive resilience boost. He has quite a cool melee attack as well, only one attack hitting on twos, but anti-infantry 4 plus. On that 4 though, he deals an infantry unit D6 mortal wounds. The next key character is a weird boy, again he can be one of those two characters attached, and his special ability is to teleport the unit somewhere on the board. In classic orc style he can hurt your own unit, but otherwise the unit has essentially deep strike, turn 1, or whatever you want. He's got a great threat option if you include a war boss, or it's just good for scoring secondary points. He also hits hard too in melee, 3 attacks hitting on 2, strength 8, D3 damage, pretty good. But when he's leading a squad, depending on how big that unit is, the melee is buffed. He can go to strength 14, D3 plus 4 damage for being in a squad of 20. Obviously even better with an additional plus 1 attack and strength in the war. Considering this, you have an auto-include start of any list, 3 war bosses, 3 pain boys, 1 weird boy, and that's because only one unit can teleport a turn, 6 squads of 20 boys, and not forgetting a little squad of Gretchen to chill on an objective, as they can give you CP for it. That's 1,520 points selected for you already, so what can you get for the remaining 480 points? You can go for mission play. Units with infiltrate will help against the counters to orcs that some armies have. Boys aren't that fast, so an opponent's best option is to infiltrate close to your deployment zone and keep them pegged back for as long as possible. You can infiltrate first and screen against that, as well as grabbing space and objectives for yourself. Boss Nickrot is cool for this, a lone operative as well, but getting within 12 inches to shoot him might be easier than you think if your opponent goes first. He also has an amazing ability once per game to teleport across the board anywhere. Brilliant for secondary play. Commandos are a great infiltration unit. Stealthen can also get a 5 plus invun, but they aren't in the list for durability or damage, so mainly a utility unit. Then you have the Storm Boys, a deep strike unit perfect for secondaries. They're fast with a movement 12 and advance and charge natively. Squishy though and not very scary, but great mission play. You can go for Resilience, take a Battle Wagon for 160 points. Toughness 12 and minus 1 AP to shoot. It can carry 22 infantry, which is perfect for moving your boys faster, and it'll be a damage sink as your opponent tries to focus on it. Crucially, it can also carry gas if you go that way. You can also go for more melee punch. Mega knobs in general, 30 points each, and while not the hardest hitting, they do work. They excel though in durability. 2 plus save, 4 plus invuln with the leader, 4 plus feel no pain in the war. They can also get reroll ones to save in this detachment. These guys will glue up your opponents as they can also get regenerated by a big mech and mega armor for 120 points. Gaz with two mega knobs is 295 points. You can also fit in a battle wagon for him. He hits hard with strength 14, 4 damage attacks, plus 1 to hit some wound which helps the mega knobs and gets him wounding everything on 2s. Also the unit gets lethal hits and in the war, critical 5s. Comparing the two, Gaz with two dudes kills 2 point more terminators in a non-war swing than the big mech with 6 mega knobs. But the mega knobs with the big mech is a more resilient unit, gaining a 4 plus invun, reroll wants to save with an enhancement that Gaz can't take, and return a destroyed model each turn. Choose whichever type of unit you need. Some key tactics for the green tide. The enhancements are great and you'll want 4 but can only choose 3. One of them for mega knobs to make them count as 10 models and gain the detachment buff. One to generate CP. One for a war boss to hit harder. And one for a character to get reroll charges. The reroll charges is best for the weird boy as his unit will be jumping around 9 inches away from your opponent. So the reroll is key. Include a war boss with the hard hitting enhancements in the same squad. So when they get in they'll be punching better. You have the strat to add the round number to the charge roll. I'd keep the weird boy jump to turn 2 and really get the advantage of a rerollable 7 inch charge. Once any squad gets into combat, use the strat for reroll wounds. 20 boys, not in the war, get an 81% increase in the amount of terminators they can kill. This will get used every turn, but being a battle tactic might be the one your opponent chooses to vex and increase the CP cost. The next strat you'll use every turn is come on lads, return D3 plus 2 boys in the unit. This is why Gretchen and the enhancement to generate CP is so key. And my favourite strat, go get them. After you've been shot, you can make a move, and with a big squad, it's 6 inches. 
and you can move into combat. It's something I'd warn my opponents about, as it'll be a big shock, as once in combat you'll be safe and hit first in their turn. A key part to making this attachment sing is the movement in the charging, piling and consolidation. You want to get your boys tying up all your opponent's units and really doing the work where it's needed. How about considering this video next, which will talk all about how to do that best. See you in soon. Bye.